Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning about Spiranthes magnicam horum shevik, otherwise known as the Great Plains Ladies Tresses Orchid. This video was made possible by the lab of Dr. Betsy Esselman at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. Her lab is currently researching the Great Plains Ladies Tresses Orchid, as well as several other species of orchid. The species of orchid we're looking at today is a herbaceous perennial that grows to be about 4 to 16 inches tall and is noted for releasing a sweet coumarin fragrance when blooming. The scent of coumarin resembles that of vanilla. The Great Plains Ladies Tresses Orchid is native to North America and according to NatureServe, this species has a conservation status of vulnerable in its native habitat. This orchid prefers prairies, especially those with basic soils, such as ones containing limestone and dolomite. A very similar species, Spiranthes cernua, otherwise known as the nodding lady's tresses orchid, prefers acidic soils. This may be useful when trying to distinguish one of these species from the other. If we look at the stem of a Great Plains lady's tresses orchid, we can see that it has an alternate leafing pattern. It also has simple leaves, an entire leaf margin, meaning that the leaves aren't lobed, and you can't really see it, but the stem is slightly pubescent. Lastly, the leaves have a parallel leaf veination. What I mean by parallel leaf veination is that the veins in the leaves of this species run parallel to each other. The basal leaves, which are the leaves at the base of the plant, are typically present during the summertime, but will wither away about two weeks before the plant flowers. However, a few leaves will persist on the stem when flowering. This characteristic is another one of those that can help us distinguish our orchid from Spiranthes cernua. When Spiranthes cernua flowers, it keeps its basal leaves. The Great Plains Ladies Tresses Orchid blooms September to October. When it does, a spike-like inflorescence of 13 to 50 sessile white flowers will arise. These flowers are typically arranged in a spiral pattern, which is faintly visible in the photo shown. Each flower has three sepals, one of which is on top, and two lateral ones that are said to look like bull horns. There is also two petals at the top, and on the bottom there is a labellum, which is a modified petal that serves as a landing pad for insects. This orchid is mostly pollinated by bumblebees, but can be pollinated by other insects as well. Each flower on a Great Plains Lady Tresses orchid is perfect, so it has both male and female reproductive parts. However, they look different than your standard pistil and stamen. This is because the male and female reproductive organs of an orchid are fused into a structure called a column, so they can be kind of hard to differentiate. Here's a closer look at a column from the inside of one of the flowers. If the flowers of a Great Plains Ladies Tresses orchid can't get pollinated, they can still produce seeds using a process called agmospermy, which is the production of seeds without fertilization. Nonetheless, regardless of method to obtain seed, the fruit that arises is called a capsule, and it contains thousands of tiny seeds that are dispersed through the wind. Orchid seeds are kind of wacky and they lack an endosperm, so they rely on mycorrhizal fungi symbionts to provide food for them as they grow. This is a critical form of symbiosis because orchids rely heavily on their mycorrhizal fungi. If it isn't present, the seeds won't germinate. Additionally, established orchids with decent root systems can remain dormant underground for many years using their mycorrhizal fungus to provide food for them. For this reason, counting the actual number of orchids in a population can be difficult because many individuals in a population may be dormant underground waiting for the proper time to come out and flower. I was lucky enough to get this photo of a Great Plains Ladies Tresses Orchid Root System because Dr. Esselman's lab is actually looking at mycorrhizal fungus orchid relationships. I didn't just go out and, you know, rip an orchid out of the ground for fun. <laughs> Alright, that is all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed learning about Spiranthes Magna Camporum, otherwise known as the Great Plains Ladies Tresses Orchid with me. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching!